Did you wonder? Do you wonder? Have you wondered? Could you wonder if the pet safe stay and play Ethan's thingy majigger is right for you? Does it work? Is it worth it? Let's find out. Stick with me. We got this. Review point number uno. One, ease of use. Yes, it is easy to use. You get the little flaggy medaggies. Well, it comes in this cute little box, has these flags, has the transmitter, has the collar. Oh, and it has a charger, very important. And it has a little power sourcey, midorcey. What? Making up words, making my tech guy slash Mr. Editor man really annoyed. Let me refocus. It comes in this cute box, your transmitter, your collar, your charger for your collar, and the flags. Yes, this is easy to use. Super simple. Our dog learned very quickly where the boundary is and what the noise sounds like. So plug it up, turn it on, sync it together, make sure you turn on the transmitter first, then the collar. Okay, let's review how the range works. It's three quarters of an acre or 105 feet. Your range is a radius in feet or acre to the transmitter. The transmitter would be in the center and blah, 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 blah. We all failed geometry. Oh no, we passed geometry, we passed geometry. Anyway, <laughs> the range is pretty good. So our dog can go fairly far out into the yard do her business, run around. She has plenty of room to play. It does not seem to get a lot of interference. We do have a metal railing around our porch and I have read that it may be in the manual of this one. I can't remember for sure. We did have a previous e-fence type thing, wireless fence that was cheap and an Amazon buy. Didn't even have a brand name, okay? Total waste of money. That thing shocked me when the transmitter was turned off and it was just a whole little thing. The dog would be next to the transmitter and it would zap her. That thing got a lot of interference. That thing's range was stupid. This we've had no issues with for the last seven months and we are pretty happy with it. Oh man, I just spoiled that. Oh, freebies for you. Buy it if you need it. Range is good, interference is good. Sometimes the range does seem to shift a little bit, but that seems to be all right. Our dog is able to adapt very well to it, so that's fine. I will give it two thumbs up. Battery life. The battery life, it says it can last two weeks or three weeks. I can't remember what it says, but we usually get a week and a half to uh, two weeks before charges. Um, and that is us not waiting till it's red. We usually charge when it's blinking yellow. What I mean by that is when I when it is blinking green and slow, that means the battery is 100% or mostly charged. When it's blinking green and fast, that means the battery's getting a little lower. Yellow means battery's getting low and red means now you need to charge me or I will not work shortly. So we don't tend to let it get red. It occasionally does get red. The more your dog tests the fence, the more often it will need to be charged. Um, you can take it off at night if you want. Our dog does very well on this thing. How it behaves if the power goes out? Well, obviously, unless you have it plugged up to a generator, it does not work. Now, however, it does start beeping when it loses power, which is annoying. So we've had a few power outages. So what we do is we turn it off and when the power comes back on, we turn it back on. But something we have learned is please make sure that your dog or the collar is in range of the uh, transmitter. Otherwise it will not recognize that the dog, it, and I mean close proximity, like not just in the normal range. One time the power came back on and she was still within range and, the, and it turned on and it didn't realize that she was in range so it started yelling at her and it did beep her so that was not fun so please just when you turn it back on after a power outage just make sure it's within the same room when the caller's battery has died we've had it die once in the last seven months we just charged it and it came on and it was fine and there was no issues so that's good so the battery life is definitely great the previous one the no name brand from amazon it lasted less than a few hours. Um, this one, you definitely can get several days to two weeks, depending on your dog. Definitely the battery life is good. Just a warning, the beep might sound like a kitchen timer. We have a kitchen timer that we bought after, months after, and apparently the beep is very similar to the collar. So sometimes our dog will hear that beep and she will think, ah, why, I'm, I'm where I'm supposed to be, and she can't figure out what's wrong. So. Um, just a heads up, that might happen. Similar beats might start freaking your dog out. On the painful level, we have it on the lowest setting. Our dog is very soft and 
she is quite the escape artist and she will jump out and go and it's just it's dangerous she is microchip but still we don't want her roaming the neighborhood there's a busy highway behind us there's a busy interstate not too far definitely do not want her roaming about so we have this um and she was getting out i was going out there repairing the fence uh, anyways you're not here for my story my point is um the dog does learn that it's the noise that's the correction and not the shock you really don't want them to have to get shocked um hannah it she's so soft she's so i, I don't know that she's been shocked in a long time it seems to work her very well for her is it painful it's a little uncomfortable i have to say i didn't really like being shocked um, by the max setting, but um, you know, you can turn it down. You should be able to turn it down. Um, if you're if you're having to use the max setting all the time, something is maybe needs to be addressed aside from that. This is a uh, this is a backup for us. We are really trying to uh, work on training and we're gonna get the fence repaired and all that kind of stuff. So this is just a reinforcement so the dog doesn't escape because it was like becoming a very big issue. Durability, yes, it actually seems to be durable. She's been out in the rain, she plays with it, she wears it all the time. It seems to be durable. The transmitter is in our living room, so the kids sometimes whack it with the toy. It seems to be fine, so durability for the transmitter and the receiver, the collar, seems to be really great. And it is adjustable for size. I don't know how comfortable. Hannah's 42 pounds and it's kind of big and clunky on her. I don't know that I would want to put it on my 10 pound Shizu. It could work for a dog that small. I definitely don't know that I would, but we can definitely uh, adjust it to a much more much larger neck. I mean, it's huge. So yes, I definitely think that it can fit most size dogs. I don't know about 10 pound and under. It kind of seems a little clunky to me for a dog that small. You probably could use it. When you start getting to five pound dogs, you know, the, tr the receiver just might be the same size as their head. Just, just saying. It's, it's kind of big. So I don't know that I would want to use it for a dog that small. And this is my last and final review point. Is it worth the price? Currently, right now, it is $319.95 on Amazon with Prime shipping. And as of today, July 3rd, there is a coupon that you can click and it is $20 and you save that. So it is $300. Is it worth it? I definitely would say that it is. Knowing that my dog is safe, knowing that she's not escaping. And when I say she is an escape artist, I mean, I was having to do a walk around the fence and check the perimeter of the fence. 10 times a day it seemed like and she still was escaping and my neighbor was yelling at me so we had to do something we had to do something and i think that this something is definitely worth it you could definitely use it with no fence if you're out camping this could be a great um thing but i think most campsites do require that you have some sort of enclosure or a uh, lead so uh, may not work for all campsites it's definitely worth the investment in my mind is it as good as a fence no but if your dog is better and smarter and more clever than a fence then you know this could be a really great option for you it's been a really great option for us it's definitely worth the price it's Definitely, we tried a cheaper product. It didn't do well. It was awful. It, we used it a month and it was terrible. I, it was, it was, she would still escape. Like she still would escape with that cheap one. And this one, I wish we'd just gotten it first. To be honest, I would have saved more money. This one, it worked. It's done great. I highly recommend it. Also, the effectiveness of this collar. One of the things that we did, if you really want to get a better effect from the training collar, don't let your dog become collar wise. What do I mean by that? The dog doesn't need to learn that it's the collar that is making the noises, the beeping and the shocking. They do not need to know that, the vibrating. It also, I think it vibrates. They don't need to figure out that it's the collar. They need to think that it's just, this is what happens when I do the behavior that is not desirable, like escaping. So that means that when we put the collar on her, we did not turn on the e-fence at first. We let her get used to it and she went beyond the boundary with the collar on a couple times. On a, and so she did not learn that it was the collar. Also, when I take her on a walk, I turn off the transmitter. 
so that I'm not taking off the collar so she does not learn that the collar comes off, I have freedom. She does not need to associate that the, it's the collar that is limiting her freedom. Also, this means that if the battery does die, she is not escaping. So this is very, very important. Also, if we if it's charging and one of the kids lets the dog out like happened today, she's not aware of the fact that she can go off and go gallivanting in the world. Be smart in how you use this and you will get the better effect. Peace.